Hey guys, it's Josh here from Marquis Flooring and we're back for another edition of Third Thursday Training. This is episode five and today we've got the guys here from Festool and Fine and we're gonna go through some of the latest technology in various different machines to give you the latest tips, show you the features and we're gonna give a couple of guys a few demos, a demonstrations so they can try them out for themselves. So I'll hand it over to Wayne to kick things off. Oh, well, thanks team, uh, and Josh, thanks for the intro. Uh, and I appreciate the opportunity on behalf of Mark Hughes Flooring uh, to bring a few festival items. What we're gonna to do today is we're just going to summarize some of the core product lines for the flooring industry. So we'll start off with dust extraction, which is our core component, uh, which we've got on display here. So there's a multitude of models within the range and different classifications. So I do encourage you, depending on the work site that you're on, uh, to check, uh, especially if it's a multi-construction subcontracting site, just verify what class or classification of extractor that you do require, because that will determine what you need for site so there's no downtime or any lack of operation. On display today, what we do is we have our new CT MIDI, which has just been released uh, to the market only just six weeks ago, uh, and our new upgraded 26 litre. Um, so this all has new, the new thermal overload protectors now, and all the new mesh hosing, uh, which allows obviously more flexibility, and it eliminates rubbing against a lot of your work, uh, and categories like that as well. So you may be familiar with Vestal, it's more of a system. Okay, so for example here, we've got our sustainers stacked onto the top of our dust extractors, which gives us full flexibility and a nice system for the workplace. And over here, obviously, we have the 26 litre, so very, very easily compatible. And what we can do is we can just lock, lock these sustainers on and lock them off, and then we can stack a multitude of sizes on top. So nice and easy, depending on how many Festool tools that you're operating. So what we're gonna to do today, we're mainly gonna focus on the 26 litre uh, and introduce the new Bluetooth technology features as well. Just a quick overview on this, it now has the new Bluetooth feature built into the machine. Uh, it has a very nice adaptable housing top here, which holds the hose, the cleaning set, uh, and all the accessories that you may need. This can be adapted to any Bluetooth, even if you're trying to do clean up on your drills, you might be drilling into concrete, and you can automatically Bluetooth that now even to a cordless drill. Our 26 litre is the main one we're gonna focus on today because you can retrofit a Bluetooth module to this machine. So we'll just bring it down off the table now. So 26 litres of dry dust capability. It's also a wet applicator, uh, and it's normally about half of the dry capacity for wet application. And you can change out the filters to a wet application filter, so you've got the versatility of wet and dry filtration. So 26 litre, we've got manual cleanup. So we can manually turn the machine on, and then we've got an, also got an auto feature so we can plug our power tool outlets into the auto feature, which we'll discuss as we operate many of the tools. Now this is our Bluetooth module, which has been fitted to the front end of the housing here, and also included in that Bluetooth module is a little adapter that you can retrofit to the end of the hose. Now the idea of that is if we want to do clean up, we can just automatically turn the extractor on. So for example, may have some clean up at the end of the, the job and we don't have to go all the way back to our extractor to turn it on manual. We can just simply retrofit it and do our clean up. On the front of the machine, if we put it on manual, we have an airflow monitor. So the airflow monitor allows us to adjust the suction depending on the application. So if you're using saws, routers, you may have more waste, you may need to increase the airflow. So this machine runs up to 3,900 litres of airflow a minute, 
and the smaller machine that we just spoke about earlier runs around at 37. Uh, so 1200 watt machines, cyclone motors, they're very, very efficient. If we do open the, the, the hood of the extractor up, what we have here is we have a flat housing filter that you can see is completely hidden and doesn't expose down the bottom. So we get a true 26 litres of dry capacity and we're really getting a bag fill rate of up to about 95%, 97%. So very, very efficient. So with your bags, they are disposable bags. However, you can get long life filter bags as well. And we're also gonna introduce the new cyclone system to you today, uh, which again will eliminate additional filter bags and give you a longer service life uh, on your, your dust capabilities. With the Bluetooth module, if we are using a cordless product, and we'll use the plunge saw as an example, we've got a couple of 18 volt batteries in here. So again, if we switch the extractor on, fit a Bluetooth battery to the Bluetooth module. Now if we don't have Bluetooth batteries, we don't have to go and buy them, we can still use our standard run-of-the-mill 18 volt battery from 4.2 amps right up to 5.2s and all we can do is we can switch the tool on or the extractor on from here. Okay, so you don't have to buy Bluetooth batteries theoretically to run the extractor. You can use this manual switch as well. So you have the versatility of both options. And you can run two tools off one extractor, so you can link two Bluetooth modules to two tools from the one extractor. And it's just a, a swivel cyclone system and will create and act as a gravity dump bin um, to the waste disposal. And how this operates, again, we will click this into the top of our dust extractor. And we can hook this and retrofit it here to our dust extractor. Put it on manual, make sure we're all working. And now if we vacuum up dust, what's going to happen is that the dust is going to capture in our waste compartment here. So around about, on average, about 5 litres of capacity. Now to increase that capacity, we have another waste compartment. with a lid so you can close it off at the end of the day and pack it back in the work wagon, it's not going to drop everywhere and you can buy additional clear tubs. Okay, so if you're filling a number of them during the day. And what happens now to increase our capacity from 5 to 15 litres, additional on top of our extractor. we can lock it into place as so. Now there's clear plastic rubbish bags you can insert uh, into the clear tub as well. So if you wanna wrap that up without any extra, extra disposability of the dust, um, you certainly can. So now we've got 26 liters of capacity here and we've got another 15 liters of capacity here. So the dust is obviously coming in the dust hose at the front and it's cycling and swiveling around through the cyclone system. So it's all capturing on the sides and then it's basically some tropical force that's just created as a gravity dump bin and then the bulk of the dust is gonna fall through to this waste compartment and you find dust transferring through to your dust bag. So really, on an application, this is gonna hold 95% of the waste and only 5% is really going through to your dust bag. So you can see those increased service lives of your dust bags and the versatility of having a much larger capacity holding where you can break it down, pack it away, put it back in your wagon at the end of the day. All right, well that concludes
the summary on dust extraction. What we're going to do now is we'll move on to the punch saw, and then we can operate these tools as we go. All right, so what we'll do is that we'll just do a summary of the plunge saws by Festool. So there is, again, like the extractors, there's more than one model. There's some larger 75 mil depth of cuts, there's some larger 85 mil depth of cuts. However, today we'll talk about our most common, our largest selling saw, which is our TS55. So this gives you 55 mil depth of cut off the rail. However, using our rail systems, which is about 95% of the application anyway, you're gonna lose five mil because the rail's five mil thick. Now rails obviously gives you the benefit of accurate and precise and straight parallel cutting, and they do come in different lengths. So if you're unaware, there's you know, uh, 1080 lengths, there's 1400 which is the most common. There's 2.4s, 2.73 meters, and there's any five meter rails. Now clearly these are not very transport friendly, um, but they're okay if you're working in a, a workshop. You can join rails together. <laughs> okay, so that's why I just want to show you this little prop here that I've got. So this is just showing you a few other little accessories. So clearly a couple of rail connectors uh, with little pinched grub screws and you can join the front and you can see you're joining also through the back here. Uh, and this allows you to keep the rail parallel and straight and then we can just zip those up. But you can join any number of rails together. Now, if you're joining more than two rails together, you're joining three, you just sort of may vary like half a mil variance. So you need to clamp really at both ends or secure your work. A couple of other little accessories I just want to talk to you about. We do have little rail stops. So, you know, if you're doing repetitive work or if you're doing a large plunge, the back of the saw will sit into the little rail stop and eliminate the rail from kicking back or sliding back on your rail when you punch through as well. And these are called little rail deflectors. So if you're doing a lot of little short cuts, maybe a little forward overhang cuts, of course the dust hose and the, let's say electrical cable from your saw if you're using 240, will run over this deflector rather than catching, let's say on the opposite side here on the raw aluminium. Okay, so it's just another little nice little accessory that you can get with Vestal and then you may be very familiar with clamps. So if you are using a work table where you have the ability to put your rail on the substrate, then you have the ability to slide a clamp underneath your substrate and clamp up. So the rail is not gonna go anywhere. However, if you are just cutting flooring, you've got nowhere to clamp. So very cleverly, Festool made sure that on the underside of the rail, you had a couple of little sponge strips. So unless there's a lot of surface dust, if the floor is clean, uh, with those sponge strips and the saw on the rail, it actually is pretty secure uh, with you working along the rail. So very few times it was actually slide out of place anyway. Now, like all applications, you know, requires a different blade. So I just thought I'd just explain some of the colour patterns and some of the blades that are on offer with Festool. And it doesn't have to just be the plunge saw, it could be compound miter saws or table saws. The green circle obviously in the inside clearly is designed, it's telling it's a Festool product, it's a Festool blade, so you know it's Festool. And then the sub colours on the outside are different applications. So. The most common is going to be the yellow, which is just a standard timber blade. However, it does come in different teeth configurations. So 48 tooth would come standard with the saw as scope of the delivery, but you must remember it's like a universal blade. So it's good for a lot of jobs, but not the master of any. So if you are doing ripping, it's going to be a bit of a fine tooth blade. So you're really like a 28 tooth blade will still give you the like a precise uh, beautiful finish uh, and slice through the substrate a lot quicker. The blue segmented blade, uh, this is a negative pitch, so more for your aluminiums. So if you've got any aluminium mouldings or anything like this, uh, this will be a blade that you could use here because you'll dull your timber tungsten tooth blade off uh, or plastics or uh, perspex and things like this. 
and then the red segmented is more for like your laminates. It's a triple chip blade, okay? So your laminates or your hard surface uh, and a perfect opportunity for flooring as well. Okay, so if you're looking for splinter free, beautiful finishing cuts, this is another blade that uh, you could look at moving forward. And like Festool, I mean, there's always many accessories. So if we're talking about rails, you can put them all in a rail bag if they're no longer than 1400 long. And you can fit three rails in here. And then you get a nice little zip where you can put your clamps or your rail connector. So you can put a few little bits and pieces in there. And then your rails. So we'll get out a 1080 rail. Uh, and I do have two 1400 rails in there as well. As you can see, I've here. So depending on what application you're doing, you have the flexibility to use different length rails. Remembering we can join rails together. The type of application that you can use with these products is clearly like a lot of the sub flooring that we probably do a demonstration here. Um, but you also may be laying your flooring. Uh, you also may be cutting out damaged boards, okay, as well. So you can set the depth on the, the, the tools. Uh, and you've got fine adjustment to make everything more accurate and precise. So if we have a look, clear look here, um, we spoke about these sponge strips, but also there's these little clear splinter guards. It's a bit hard to see that far back, but you can see them here. Uh, and obviously when you make your first cut, you're calibrating the blade to the splinter guard. So it just means if you're working off this edge as your measurement, everything's accurate and precise every single time. But please remember that this is a wear point. So this is always going to wear, so if you change blades and have a thicker curved blade, it's going to eat into the splinter strip all the time. So after a little while, if you're looking at, if you're reducing maybe vis visible notice that you've got splintering or chip out, it may be because you need to replace the splinter guard strip. And you can buy that strip in lengths of 1400 or 5 meter lengths, and they just simply replace, peel it off, clean the edge up, and add more splinter guard. I may decide that I strive my lines, I've done my measurements, and again I'm gonna line my splinter guard strip, which we spoke about, straight to my line. And then in this case, because I'm working off a table and I'm cutting subflooring, I can clamp very cleverly underneath and just support my work. Now in this case, we can use two clamps or we can just use one. And with clamps, you have the ability to use what I'm using at the moment, which I call a fast fix clamp, which has the depth capability of 160 millimeters and clamping depth, or you can use an F clamp. And an F clamp has the clamping capability of 120 millimeters. So you have the ability of, of both options uh, moving, moving forward. So if we theoretically put that saw on that piece of material there. We can determine by, maybe I might just flick this around a little bit so everyone can see. The depth gauge. So those of you who aren't familiar with the product, very, very simply we can adjust the depth of our cut. And what'll happen at the back of the saw, we have a riving knife which is retractable and that will only retract as far as our blade has been set to the depth. So no matter what we're doing, now if you're unsure because you're cutting out a damaged board and you think, okay, before I hit the concrete, it's roughly about 10 mil, um, you know, you can set the machine at 10 mil depth of cut, uh, and then you can define adjust uh, to eliminate um, scraping your blade on your concrete. So I'm not quite sure if you're aware of this little dial configuration here and this is a little fine adjustment okay so clockwise or anti-clockwise and you can fine adjust that where you're literally just going through your substrate without cutting any further also if you get your blade sharpened you can recalibrate your saw to the actual depth because you may lose a little bit of 
uh, let's say, diameter um, size from your blade. So what we would do here is that we would set this back to zero, and then we would plunge our blade down to the surface of the work, and we can just see if we can just move our blade, and it's actually turning a little bit free here, without actually just touching the work surface. So I can just physically adjust Okay, so I've recalibrated the blade by fine adjusting here now that the blade is going to work perfectly now off our measurement. Okay, so you have that flexibility uh, if you need it. Now, if we put the saw on the rail, if you're unaware what this little perspex guard is, yes, you can see where your front blade is passing, um, but you'll notice that if you take it out, it's got a little flush face on it. So that's to assist when you pass through your material that the dust doesn't bloom out the front. So what you can do is you just push this down, okay? And then that offers a little position point at the front here so that eliminates the dust from escaping out the front once we pass through the cut. So let's set this saw up. This is our electric version. So we have a little pivot here where we can add our dust hose. And then we can grab our lead. Now you notice that many of the tools work off these plug-it leads. So if you've got a multiple of tools, you've got a multiple of leads. And the biggest damage to a saw, or if it requires servicing, is a damaged lead. So if you've got a second, secondary lead, it eliminates a lot of your, your downtime. So we can plug that in now, and we should have power. Take our timber into consideration, obviously, with our depth. We've got a couple of position points on the front here, which tells us where the blade is going to come through and and the saw is cut perfectly against our splinter strip there. Now if you are doing any undercutting or beveling the saw to any degree, it does not cut back into the splinter guard. It will actually cut directly it hasn't altered that front edge one little bit so if I unclamp that which is a very good indicator of how accurate the product is so at any stage please come up and you can see that edge there hasn't altered from that 90 degree cut where any other product will actually eat in to that first cut position which gives you I suppose peace of mind that you're buying quality accurate tooling and then of course you just have the flexibility of electric to cordless um, we have down here we have the KS120 and here we have the KS60. So we're going to feature the KS60 today in more detail because of the lightweight and the compactness. It's a really, really popular saw for flooring contractors. However, they both have their own merits and their own features, uh, and you can make that decision obviously if you get to the stage of purchasing. All right, KS60. So. 60 meaning the, the depth of cut. The advantage though, you've still got a 305 drawer at the front. Okay, so even for your wider flooring boards, your 220s, you know, you've got plenty of scope to obviously um, cut. And even on a 45, you're still getting 225 uh, you know, drawer as well. So it really meets that flooring industry really, really well. As compact 
um, capabilities with it. Well, clearly, if we're packing this saw up, there it is. From a weight point of view, just around that 17 kilos of weight. So, for a solid flooring contractor like yourself, <laughs> easy to operate, easy to handle. Doesn't take up a lot of room in the van or the truck or the ute. Um, so again, it's a, a very, very easy saw uh, to work uh, within your industry. Set up, there you go, it's ready to operate. Power, obviously, dust extraction, you're ready to rock and roll. So very, very easy. Now, the saw on its own, or you can adapt it, and we do manufacture and make and provide table systems, okay? So trolley systems and extension arms are available for the product as well. What you probably find though, a lot of your work, you may be just looking for a little nice little compact saw just to sit on the ground, do all your cuts, but if you're looking for something more elaborate, you can add the trolley system to the machine uh, as you go. So three or five draw at the front. Um, obviously both on your miters, uh, left and right, you've got the 60 degree. Okay, so you've got that flexibility, you're not limited left and right uh, as well. And on your, your bevels, you've got the ability to bevel it past 45 to 47. So we'll just run you through a few of the little features uh, of the machine. So on the front of the saw, we can extend the footprint. So we can extend the footprint out this way. And with our back fences, they can slide all the way out and lock off. And if you need to remove them, you can simply easily remove them. And we'll do that on both sides. So two 16 millimeter blade, eight and a quarter in all terms, okay, and 60 mil depth of cut, which we covered earlier. Now, if we are using the miters, we can just undo our front uh, support knob here, and then we can just move the saw along and it'll click into the most common increments, just like all your other products will do, okay? Uh, however, this is a laser etched stainless, so of course, it's uh, gonna eliminate the wear that you'll get on the product over a period of time. It does have a nice little feature at the front here that you can move this little dial here. You can slide it to the left of me uh, and now overrides all of those most common lock-in. Okay, so if you are needing to fine adjust, uh, especially for some of your angles, you can. And then just simply just pop it back and then again, it'll lock into your most common increments. Okay, so, and then you can just do the knob up and then it's it's, uh, it's secure. For your compounds uh, or your bevels, uh, you can just undo the little locking mechanism at the back and you can now bevel the saw over. It's not going to fall away on you so much. It's on a quite a tight bearing system which sort of allows a little more safety. Uh, it's showing you here on each side uh, where your pivot points are. And I don't know if you can sort of see here this button, the green button, again, it's a feature. So if I come all the way to 45, I can actually remove my fences. And if I push that green button, I can go past 45 all the way to 47. And if I lift that up, you'll feel that click into the 45 position. And again, it'll come back and it'll tell me when I'm at 90. And then I can override 90 again by pushing the button in and then coming back to the right hand side and the same process on that side. Otherwise come back and then I know where I am at 90 and I can lock my lever off at the back and again I have the accuracy and precision of all those compound miters. Now the machine also does have a trenching feature. Okay, so I can slide that little lever down and I can adjust, you can see my blade hasn't traveled all the way down and I can adjust that clockwise or anti-clockwise Okay, up or down. So if I, if I need to do any trenching, okay, I have the ability to do it. Please just remember though, is that you just need a little bit of a 10 mil packer at the back here to eliminate that ski jump, you know, of the curve of the blade. And then you can travel all the way through your work surface. So look, look just to give you a little bit of a, a quick rundown of the product, let's pop it over to 45. Now, the, the blade that comes with the saw is a 36 tooth blade. So a little bit of a universal blade again. 
But as we spoke earlier, uh, what, whatever you're doing, you may need an additional blade. So, of course, on some of your timber flooring finishes, especially with something like your laminates, um, you can get a finer tooth or a triple tip blade to eliminate again um, your splintering and have your nice clean finishes. However, you can obviously flip your board up uh, and cut it backwards, okay? Uh, or you can do a scribe cut uh, and then again will eliminate. But remember, a scribe cut, you're cutting twice, theoretically. But if you've got an open seam join, um, you probably won't mind cutting twice to get the right finish. A very nice little simple clamp system as well, uh, which you can clamp uh, through the front depending on the substrate, if it's narrower, or you can clamp through the back of the saw. can clamp our board. So that secures it as well, but obviously you can use the clamps, sacrificial hand to support the timber. If you are using the clamps, never ever rely on the clamps, always use that sacrificial hand to support your timber, because depending on how thick the timber or how hard the substrate is, you may get some kickback. So in this case, Let's remove the clamp and we can pivot that saw to any, any position and we can do a couple of cuts. Now, if I'm marking my cut on the board, I've got the ability here to turn on or turn off a light. What the light does, it's not a laser, it's actually a a scribe line shadowing the curve of the blade. So again, I can cut to the left or the right side of my mark. Very, very accurate and easy to see. However, be aware that if you're in the bright sunlight, you'll struggle to see it. Okay, so most of the time you might be doing probably more internal fit out anyway. So I'll just do a, a, a cut here. cut line. What I really like about the saws is that they also have what we call a smart bevel. I'm not sure who, who's used a smart bevel at this, at this stage, but it's very, very easy to operate. And this is what it looks like. So it's really designed for working and finding your internal or external corners. So if you do need to go into an internal corner, you can find the angle. And once you've found the angle, you can literally just lock that off and we can come back to our saw uh, and make that cut and dissect that angle and cut basically half of that angle. Or if it's an external, you can slide these two aluminium pivot points out here and of course clearly if this was our external corner we can just find it and lock that off and then slide those in before we go back to our saw. Now what we would do here is that we can very very easily pivot our saw around and we can use our, we can go either way, um, we can use our tracking laser, okay, uh, on this way our shadow mark, and we can line this up to our line here and to the side of our, now probably easier um, obviously on this one, depending on where you're positioned over there, is that you can come over closer and see what I'm doing here, and I can finally adjust here so have a look at my pivot points here so you can sort of see this little white line here here and yep. here yep. 
So then I'm lining that up to the side, this little arrow here, on the side of this, this, this here. So once that's locked in, and then I can lock that off, and then bring this away, and then when I make that cut, I'm cutting half of that, or dissecting that angle. So it just means that I don't have to go back two or three times to make that perfect cut. It's gonna be perfect every single time. And the same would uh, apply to if we were doing some skirting. So, same thing, we may have found our angle, and in this case, if we're working off that position there, well, we know that half of that's gonna be 45. So, and then you may cut your skirting again fairly on the way that you're fixing it to the wall. Would that be pretty normal for a few of you, or you can lay it down? So, what we'll just do here is we'll just do a couple of little cuts. Um, just if I pivot it around here. What I might do actually is I will shorten that down somewhat so it just make it a little easier. Come up with any any measurement you like. There we go, lock it off. So we just found any 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 measurement um, and then we'll make sure actually the the angle that we that we found okay, so we didn't have to go back two or three times to mark we can use a smart bevel to find the angle and then we can cut and save you time moving forward hey everyone yeah, a... I'd like to present the new range of our hybrid sanders so when I say hybrid it means that they'll run off a battery pack like this here or a mains adapter so they'll run cordless and they'll run 240 powered. So all the batteries the same as in you can plug into them or mm. okay. Sweet. 12 volt one or 18? So the 18 yeah. but just a, a lower amperage. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that you've got the flexibility. So first of all, you have probably easy to do it this way, you have three different shapes. Now there is a standard 240 volt option in all these three shapes as well. And they run about 12,000 RPM. And these hybrid sanders run at 10,000 RPM. So you can sort of see there's not a lot of difference. However, if you are running production wise, then obviously we'd probably recommend to stay with the 240. But for the versatility and the flexibility of what you may be doing on site, then these really come into their own. So first of all, there's three different patterns. Really what you need to do is probably if you purchase the first one, you choose what pattern you want or pad size, and then you can buy the additional tools as skins, okay, or basics. And they, additional tools will still come with their own dust bag, and the dust bag is a reusable bag, okay? Uh, and then also they have your dust port on here for your dust hose. So you have, again, the flexibility of both options. On all three models, you also have bump pads. So this is obviously eliminating the pad rubbing into the surface, but these are all removable on all three models. Okay, so whether you need them or you're not. So clearly what Vestal haven't done, and it's always good to point this out, because this just eliminates us from this mass production. So what we haven't done is we haven't designed a standard 18 volt 
5.2 amp battery or 6 amp battery to fit onto the back of a sander to make it all back heavy. So clearly Festool go into the market and they design a tool so you can see that the battery moves into the housing of the tool and it's made it way more ergonomic to operate. <coughs> so if this is your industry and you're holding on to these all day, uh, these are the tools that you want. Now, why we've got the different shapes is obviously to get into corners, uh, depending on what you're doing. So steer risers, anything like this. Um, flexibility obviously with many, many applications. And then you've got your standard rectangular, your iron shape, which we call it. So a lot of the time, I'll use this as is that you might quite often get a triangle sander, you know, small head, get into all your corners. But if you've got to also do a larger surface, you have a tendency to get wave points. So with an iron shape, it gives you the flexibility of still having a reasonably solid big surface. So if you're doing flat, it's going to stay flat. And then you've got the flexibility of really getting into the corners as well. Okay, so, and the one that you're passing around, obviously a 125 mil, it's giving you that eccentric random orbital motion so of course it'll cover a large surface very very quickly on these sanders they have variable speed again uh, on and off at the front right down to low speeds up to high speeds now clearly if you've got a coarse grade of paper you'll need to increase the rpm so you've got more traction with the grit but if you're using a fine paper, you can wind the RPM down a little bit and it actually lowers the decibel of the tool as well. So maybe it's a little bit more user friendly to operate. The tools will run with a cordless battery for half an hour under load. And the battery only takes half an hour to recharge. So theoretically, if you've got two batteries, there's no downtime anyway. However, if you're running production, as we said, then you can run the mains powered as well. So there's the flexibility. So I'd probably encourage you to come forward and have a go with these. You can run along the edges. Random orbital, cover a large surface. A lot quicker. Iron shake as we see, getting into your corners or again flat surfaces. Sandpaper is on there? That's one point. Yeah. All over there. All over there. So you buy your first one with two batteries, a charger, a mains adapter, and then of course you can buy your secondary shape uh, in a skin or a, or a, or a basic. Obviously with Festool, all skins or basics still come with their own sustainers. They don't come in cardboard boxes, they come in sustainers. So of course, once again, that system orientation uh, is there no matter what you're doing. Is there a sustainer that would fit more than one in? Uh, well, there's the, let's say the larger sustainers, but there's not a sustainer that would have all the inserts to fit more in. So, but as you know, all the sustainers lock into each other, so you can have a nice little range anyway. Less can you still buy the felt though separate? Remember, for a while you used to be able to buy the felt separate so you could make shapes to put well, things in. 
Yeah, you, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but five, obviously, five there's, there's there's different inserts as well, but yep. not multiple inserts to take all three in one sustainer. So you'd have to retrofit. The That's what I'm meaning. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yep. Obviously, it would be optimal to probably put them in a three or a two. Uh, a three, so yeah, three a, a, four. A, a, a four. All, all of them would be a, a, a four. What you'd need a four. Four. Yeah, with batteries and chargers. And so, as I say, with the flexibility of mains or cordless, um, you have uh, you know the ability to do different applications and and about thirty minutes of sanding is still a long time even on a cordless product. I mm. suppose a, a rundown why. Someone like myself is associated to both fine and festal. Is that the parent business of Australia, Tool Technic Systems, um, bought fine in Australia. However, globally, festal and fine aren't linked. Okay, so in Australia, the same parent company that own festal uh, own fine. Uh, however, there is a very, very close relationship in Germany between the two brands, uh, and they share a lot of technology. They've always made, they've been top of the list for grinding wise, haven't they, for grinders being? Oh, uh, metal, metal grinding, uh, core drilling, um, yeah. metal cut off saw, cold cut saws, um, very, very large yeah. range yeah. of, a uh, very large range, uh, you know, of grinding um, as well. Um, so again, you know, it's a European high spec tool, mm, absolutely. Where do we go for those, by the way, for grinders? They still go through you, Josh? Yeah. Can you get them in? Yep. You can, yep, you can yep. go. I yep. really like one. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely through, yep. Uh, no problem there at all, so. Uh, all right, so, uh, well, let's, so let's talk about uh, fine, obviously, again, and linked to the, 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 the timber, uh, the flooring industry. So, multi masters or oscillating tools. Uh, of course, this is uh, another tool that I'm sure that you've all got in your kit. Uh, clearly, there's many options, but fine were the first ones to ever release and design this tool. Uh, and of more recent times, um, they've up spec'd the product. Um, now, obviously, it's got all anti-vibration controls on it. There's full 18 volt cordless options. Uh, there's the multi-talent, which is more of a DIY building into a light industrial machine. It's really probably the old multi-master like five, uh, six, seven years ago. Uh, and then there's the multi-master, which we're showing today in both corded and cordless. Uh, and then there's also another version, which is the supercut. So the supercut obviously is a higher oscillation tool and a high wattage tool. So just giving the ability if someone's needing some additional power, uh, then there's three options within the range. So multi-talent, multi-master, and supercut. Probably one of the latest versions uh, of the tool uh, is probably the blade technology. So they've moved to Starlock and Starlock Plus, depending on the model of the tool that you're purchasing. So Starlock and our version here. Uh, so it's a, it's a star 12 integrated locking system. So it's very, very quick to operate and very, very structural once it's locked into the housing. Uh, and then it just means that the blade is not offsetting uh, or moving, okay, uh, as well. So it gives you nice, clean, straight cutting. Uh, and you get, obviously, 30% longer wear uh, out of your consumables with the quality of the blades. So just to give you a little bit of an indication, I mean, this is... Uh, cord this clearly so we can plug the battery in and we've got operation we've got variable speed on the machine we've got on and off and if we are placing a blade on the machine no matter what the blade is and then we've got obviously standard timber blades uh, we do have bimetal blades so if you're cutting skirting with obviously little uh, nails and things like this or even if you're cutting steel there's designed steel blades and then there's other specialty blades. So obviously we're now we've got this radius blade as well, which is uh, really easy to operate. And you've got something like a little scraper as well. I've just bought a little sample of today, but there's literally 60 to 70 blades in the range. Um, so the machine's not only, uh, let's say, designed for cutting, uh, it's also a sanding machine with sanding capabilities as well. So if you are putting a blade onto this machine, you can line up your 12 hole star system and you can literally click the blade into place no matter what angle you need to do. So we'll just take this blade as an example and we can just reset this. 
Okay, to release the blade, I just lift the, the lever and the blade releases. And then again, I can just have the blade in any position and I can click it in and I'm ready to operate. Come over here and release it. Okay, so it's a very, very nice, simplistic, quick operation system. So, multitude of, you might be cutting, um, let's say, some holes for a, a, a additional uh, vents, power points, um, hosing, you know, bathroom, uh, could, be, could be a multitude of jobs. So, I'll just give you an indication here on the power of this machine, even for the cordless operation. Now, with all oscillating tools, there's a little bit of a high decibel to them. Um, so, of course, earplugs or ear, ear muffs uh, are always another recommended safety feature as well as glasses. So, And then we can also pop our sanding attachments on with our sanding heads. Remember we spoke about these, so more designed for maybe getting into your corners rather than doing large surface areas. But again, we've got the ability... To sand, cut. Another common application may be <clears throat> to cut back the architrave of your skirting depending on the flooring size. So The versatility of the machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, it, so, 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 it really is an overview on blades. So, really, if you if you buy any blade, if you're only doing ten cuts, you won't really see any difference. But once you do twenty to fifty cuts, that's when you see the difference. So, on most of the let's say lower priced uh, aftermarket blades, you're probably getting about fifteen cuts. Sometimes, if you're hitting some nails, okay, um, where. On these blades, you know, you get, you'd be getting 70 to 100 cuts. Okay, depending again how many nails you, you, you hit. Um, but that's the difference in the quality of the blade. Yeah. So roughly about 30% longer wear. Mm. And you'll find that the price points, and challenge Josh, the price points uh, are really competitive to really what else is in the market. So, but like anything, you, you know, when we did the summary on the blades for the plunge saw and the compound miter saw, it's the same process. If you don't have the right blade for the application, maybe the teeth are too fine, not coarse enough, Japanese tooth, you know, to a bi metal. Uh, again, you know, if you haven't got the right blade, you're not going to actually get the best effect uh, or result from that particular blade for that application. So, uh, and the same process comes down to diamond renovation and grinding and so forth as well. So. Uh, all right, well, I'll, I'll wrap up. That uh, concludes, obviously, the summary on the product of Festo and Fine. So, look, I thank uh, Josh and Marcus Floor for the invitation, and I appreciate the staff and, obviously, the consumer, the end customer, um, coming along and supporting us tonight. Thank you. Thanks, guys. That concludes Episode 5 of Thurs Third Thursday Training. 
Thank you to the guys at Festival and thank you to you guys for coming out. Our next episode is going to be on the 20th of June and it's going to be on different timber species to give you an edge or give you a point of difference. Plus we're gonna go through some tongue and groove installation as well, a live installation in front of you guys. And that'll be on the third Thursday of June, which is going to be the 20th of June at 3.30 p.m. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you at the next episode. Thank you.